Hello, my dear friends from all over the world. We're here at the south side of Svat in the forest. And we're going to teach over some Torah. I'm here with Yaakov Yosef. Yaakov, we're going to teach some Torah? <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> okay. Then we're going to sing Ashrenu, right? Okay. Not yet, not yet. Kishechu medaber im chavir beira shemayim nasa or yosha beor choizer. When a person speaks with his friend about the fear of Hashem, a direct light and reflected light are created. Occasionally, the reflected light precedes a direct light. This happens when a recipient has a weak intellect and is unable to receive his friend's words. For then, before his friend receives from him, which is the aspect of a direct light, he, the speaker, receives from his friend. In such a case, the reflected light precedes the direct light. When a person speaks with his friend about the fear of God, even his friend does not receive from him. He, the speaker, nevertheless receives inspiration from his friend. So even if a person is speaking over and they uh, speaking over to their friend, their friend receives nothing from it. Nothing. He doesn't understand it. He doesn't. He's not really listening. That person who's speaking over, the, he is receiving himself from his own words, as, uh, from, and he's receiving it from his friend. It's, it's reflecting back. Like we're talking about the reflecting light that whatever person says reflects back at himself, that he himself is listening and benefiting because of his friend, that he's saying it over to him, and and therefore he's also benefiting. As a result of the impact that the words went out from his mouth to his friend, the light reflects back to him. This is literally the concept of reflected light spoken of in the writing. Study there. It says in the Arizal, in Eitz Chaim, 4.3. It's like someone who throws an object that hits a wall. And the object returns to him. It is the same when, it, when he speaks to his friend. Even if his friend does not receive from him, he himself can nevertheless be inspired by the words as a result of the impact that the words went out towards his friend, struck his friend, and returned to him. Therefore, he has spoken these words to himself. It is quite possible that if that he would not have been inspired by them at all. I'm sorry, let me go again. Therefore, had he spoken these words to himself, right, if his friend was not there, it would have been possible that he would not be inspired at all. But by saying them to his friend, they inspired him, even though his friend was not inspired, for they returned to him as a result of the aforementioned aspect of impacting. This comes of reflected light. It results from the principle of impacting as explained in the writings. Understand this. <laughs>
you keep singing while I'm teaching Tara, okay? <laughs> it's a little too difficult for you. That was very nice. I want to go in the car. You want to go in the car? You want to drive the car? Oh, okay. One minute. Okay, I'm just going to tell us over, explain this. We should not underestimate the importance of speaking over Torah and spreading Torah. And it is a fact not only on the people that we're, we're t teaching it to, but also helps us improve ourselves. We talk about fear of God, faith. Rabbi Nachman says in Sefer Amidos, a person, if they speak about faith to others, it increases their own faith. And we, as we know, we always have to work on our faith. So it's important to speak about faith, always. To speak about how Shem is in all places. And even when I'm giving over the Torah to you, I'm helping myself. I'm helping myself to grow and to see more clearly my own life and to better myself. And so it is, as we see from this Torah, that when you teach over, when you talk to your friend about positive things, about serving God, it's a very, very good thing because it helps you, yourself, to be stronger and to find Him even even all the more. And so even if your friend is not taking to heart everything that you're saying, it can be beneficial to you as well. And also you shouldn't underestimate that one day these words, these words can be a lot more powerful than you realize in their subconscious and in the future maybe some circumstance will happen that they'll remember these words and it'll be it'll change their life. When it's, we go to a tzaddik, a righteous person, and he says over words to us, we have to try to write, I used to write down whenever I went to a big Rebbe, what did he say to me? And I used to try to look back and think back days later, every single word he said, because every word that a righteous person says should be weighed, because it can be very, very deep. And there's stories of many people that went to a, a righteous person a sage and years later it took many many years sometimes 10 20 years and then they saw that the words were fruitful and they came true and that they were inspired by them and so therefore when we speak over to our friend when we speak over to others we don't realize maybe not even today these words were going to impact that person <coughs> but maybe in the future when we talk words that are that are endearing that words that are, are truthful from Hashem and not only that even ourselves it could be it could affect our life down the road. So we should always continuously speak positive words, words which draw us close to Hashem, words which draw, draw our friends close to Hashem, and, and the knowledge of Hashem should always be on our lips. May it be Hashem's will, we should all draw close, and we should never forget our friend. Right, Yaakov? Okay, let's go. Say bye-bye. Give a kiss. Give a kiss. Okay.